Hello everyone, I am Ashwita H. Kamsa, Assistant Professor from the Optometry Unit. I am here to present the session on Piggyback Contact Lens System. Starting with the specific learning objectives, at the end of this session, the audience will be able to understand the definition of Piggyback Contact Lens System and the importance of vision correction, indications and contraindications of Piggyback Contact Lens System, fitting techniques and lens choice, fitting assessment of rigid gas permeable lens and soft contact lens. <coughs> Before we get into the topic, we need to be aware of certain abbreviations that we are going to use throughout this presentation. The first one is PBCL which stands for Piggyback Contact Lens. The next one is RGP, Rigid Gas Permeable and SEL that stands for Soft Contact Lens. So to begin with the introduction, Piggyback Contact Lens systems were initially developed in the early 1970s for the keratoconus patients unable to tolerate their skeletal or rigid contact lenses. So we know what is keratoconus, keratoconus is nothing but a thinning, gradual progressive thinning of cornea. It is also called as ectatic condition. Complex visual conditions challenging to correct with standard rigid or soft contact lenses alone can be addressed by combining soft and hard lenses. So when we correct a complex visual conditions like keratoconus, it cannot be corrected with the sole lens like RGP, mainly because of patient's intolerance. So we can, it can be addressed with the help of when we combine with soft and RGP lenses. This condition encompasses keratoconus, post-operative refractive errors, irregular ocular surfaces and high corneal astigmatism with anisometropia. Post-operative refractive errors is people undergo lot of surgeries so which can induce sufficient amount of refractive errors. Irregular ocular surface includes PMCD that stands for pellucid marginal degeneration, Terence marginal degeneration and high corneal astigmatism with anisometropia. When people have or patients have different power and different eye that leads to anisometropia. <coughs> the application of soft contact lens as a bandage enables these patients to tolerate the rigid lens over the top of soft lens. As I was discussing earlier, the main complaint that will result from patients when they when we prescribe with the RGP that is hard lenses is the level of tolerance. They won't be able to tolerate the lens. Hence, application of a soft lens as a bandage will help the patient to relieve from the symptoms. When these lenses were introduced, the only lens materials available were relatively low oxygen permeability and were often associated with corneal complications due to hypoxia. <coughs> when the lenses were introduced initial days, the mainly the lens materials which were available were of low oxygen permeability. Here oxygen permeability stands for the level of or the amount of oxygen that is reaching the cornea when contact lens is in place. Usually the cornea receives oxygen from environment as well as from the ocular tissues. But when there is a barrier like a contact lens, the amount of oxygen reaching the cornea is comparatively low which can lead to complications of hypoxia. But recently studies have shown that hyper decay soft and hard lens materials can provide enough oxygen to fulfill corneal oxygen requirements in PBCL system. So what they have come up with the various studies is they have increased the oxygen permeability by changing the material of soft and RGP which helps to deliver more oxygen to the cornea. <coughs> so this is a picture where we where it is depicted a combination of soft and RGP that is a typical piggyback contact lens system here the red circle encircled is the RGP lens where the blue circle if you can see that is a soft contact lens. <coughs> Moving on to the indications, PBCL is indicated in patients with RGP discomfort or intolerance as we were discussing from the initial slides that means patients will not be tolerant enough for the RGP because of its nature, hard nature. Hence it is indicated with the patients with more of intolerance and discomfort. Then unstable RGP on the eye. When there are advanced cases of keratoconus or PMCD, there is a chance of popping out of the lens. The lens won't be stable on the eye. Hence, PBCL is indicated. 3 and 9 o'clock staining with RGP fit. When there is a irregular surface, there is a chances of 3 and 9 o'clock staining. That is, there will be dry areas at the 3 and 9 o'clock position which can lead to more complications. Hence, a Piggyback contact lens system will be more helpful in this case. Then if there is a presence of scar, if the patient is having a scar already in the cornea, maybe because of trauma or any ocular infections, a piggyback contact lens can help as a bandage and can help in better healing of the scar. Additionally, it can be challenging to center a GP lens for a patient with significant irregular astigmatism leading to decreased vision and comfort. 
A piggyback system can elevate many of these factors and help to protect the cornea from contact lens related adverse effect. So, when we conclude with the, all the indications that means a piggyback system can cut down many of these factors and help to provide a better corneal health and contact lens related adverse effects can be prevented. <coughs> so, what are the contraindications? The piggyback contact lens system requires insertion, removal and care for two different sets of contact lenses which means twice as much money and time. Yes, we know that we have a system, separate system, care and regimen system for soft and RGP. So, when we do something like using two lenses at a time, it is very difficult for the patient to maintain two solutions, two multipurpose solutions. Hence, it can cost more time and more money to the patient. In addition, patients should use a multipurpose solution approved for both soft and GP lenses. This is a common scenario what happens when patients go and buy in a normal optical outlet where people are not trained enough to dispense a contact lens. A person may end up buying a wrong multipurpose solution and they may use it for both soft and RGP lenses. Hence, the patient should use a multipurpose solution which is approved for both soft and RGP lenses. Then it can lead to complications of hypoxia. As we know, there is a barrier on the cornea which leads to less oxygen delivery. Hypoxia is the cornea is not receiving enough oxygen where it can lead to neovascularization. Due to less oxygen, the cornea starts developing new blood vessels which in order to deliver more oxygen, this can lead to more scarring of the cornea. Edema, there may be swelling of tissues in the corneal layers, it can lead to punctate keratitis, it can be in case of Jane papillary conjunctivitis where patients if we put a contact lens onto the patients with the Jane papillary conjunctivitis, the patient may be feeling more discomfort. So these are the certain contraindications where we cannot give a piggyback contact lens system. <coughs> Moving on to the fitting technique and the lens choice. The fitting trick involves balancing the need for a more positive soft contact lens for improved rigid cast permeable lens centration due to its more convex surface. So as we know we fit a soft lens on top of it what we fit is a RGP lens. Hence a soft contact lens what we choose has to be more towards a positive side. Why towards positive side? Because it has a more convex surface. When the lens has a more convex surface the better fitting of RGP can be done. A less positive contact lens with reduced thickness helps enhance oxygen tra transmission which may be diminished when using two lenses together. What happens if we use a less positive contact lens? Yes, there is an advantage of more oxygen transmission but when we are using two lens in combination the amount of oxygen reaching is again less. Hence, better to use a soft contact lens with a positive power for the better fitting of the RGP. So, while the contribution of soft contact lens in refractive error correction is minimal, a low powered plus lens could be recommended for optimal rigid gas permeable centration. When we give correction to the patient, the main objective of giving a piggy bag is to better fit and better visual acuity. Hence, most of the power what we give to the patients is with the RGP, not with the soft lens. Hence, a soft contact lens with a very less power can be given or the overall Power can be calculated again by doing over refraction. Ensuring adequate peripheral clearance is crucial for increased comfort and tolerance. However, achieving this balance can be challenging in keratoconic eyes where the displaced corneal apex adds to the complexity. What happens in advanced case of keratoconus, the corneal apex won't be centered, hence it will be displaced in the periphery. Hence, that can add to complexity of the lens. Here there is an image of her basic soft contact lens looks like and a RGP looks like. When we compare both soft contact lens are comparatively larger in size, larger diameter where RGP is a comparatively smaller. So how do I do the fitting assessment of a piggyback lens system? Yes, we do a fitting assessment separately for soft and RGP. Why? Because the fitting of RGP involves in the putting of fluorescein stain. The fluorescein stain what we put can if I put fluorescein stain in the soft contact lens, the soft contact lens can take up the stain and the lens goes waste. Hence, it's always very important to remember to do the soft contact lens assessment first and then the RGP because RGP we will be staining the cornea. So, starting with the soft contact lens assessment, we have several steps to be followed. The first point what we look at is centration and coverage of the contact lens. Here, if you can see, here we have the contact lens placed onto the cornea. When I say centration, 
I look whether the contact lens is well centered onto the cornea. Then coverage. If my contact lens is covering 360 degree of the limbal region, the black line what we see here is a limbus of the cornea. So if my contact lens is covering 360 degree of the limbus, then we can say that the lens has a good coverage. Then looking for the movement, I ask the patient to blink and say see what is the amount of movement, what is the type of movement, what is the speed and direction of the movement. Then moving on to the lens lag, when we check for the lens lag, we ask the patient to make the eye movement in all the quadrants and look for whether the contact lens is moving along with the eye and at what amount, that is what we determine using lens lag. We have something called push up test, that means when I want to check whether the lens is fitted very steep, very flat. What we do generally is we try to dislodge the contact lens using the lower lid and check for the pressure. It's mostly the subjective response of an examiner. If let's say I put a pressure up to 90% to dislodge the lens, that means the lens is fitted very tight, hence I need to put more pressure. Whereas let's say if I put a pressure of 10%, that means I need not put more pressure, the lens gets dislodged easily. That means the lens is fitted very flat and we need to change the lens. Then we have something called subjective impression. Subjective impression is nothing but where patient says how he is feeling with the contact lens on. We can ask the patient to grade from 0 to 10. 0 where indicates that means patient is extremely uncomfortable where 10 stands where patient is morely comfortable. Then objective impression is again examiner's point of view where examiner concludes whether the fit was a C flat or optimum. So these are the basic criteria that we look into when we do a soft contact lens assessment. Moving on to the RGP fitting, we have something called fitting philosophies in RGP. There are three parameters that we look in. The first one is apical clearance. So what is apical clearance? The lens which bears on the paracentral cornea provides variable vision due to uncorrected corneal astigmatism and risk of corneal scarring is reduced. What happens in apical clearance? As we can see from the image, the lens is mainly rested in the paracentral cornea. It's not rested in the central cornea. The black space what we see here, it indicates that lens is already fitted onto the paracentral cornea. What happens because of this, there can be due variable vision due to uncorrected refractive error and the ad only advantage from the apical clearance is risk of corneal scarring. Hence, the lens is not fitted in the corneal apex, the risk of corneal scarring is reduced in case of apical clearance. Then we have apical bearing, apical bearing in the second image here which shows that lens bears heavily on the corneal apex. As you can see a black shadow in the central cornea, that means the lens is seated very tightly onto the central of cornea. Hence, it provides a good vision, but the chances of corneal scarring is very high. The third one, the optimal, what we expect to have a fitting is three point touch. It means there will be a divided support, lens weight distributes over the larger corneal area and it is a preferred lens fitting technique it will have a stable vision and lens fitting. What happens in a three point touch, the support is not in the central or in the periphery. It is divided throughout the lens surface and lens weight is also equally distributed. When this kind of fitting assessment we get, it's a better, we get a better visual acuity and it is mostly preferred lens fitting technique. These are the three main fitting philosophies that we follow when we do our RGP fitting assessment. So in order to summarize, now we know what is piggyback contact lens system. It is nothing but soft contact lens and RGP are fitted together. First, we fit a soft contact lens. As we know the most common complications when two contact lens systems are involved is the oxygen. That means hypoxia. Silicon hydrogel is the most preferred one which allows more oxygen permeability. Dynamic fitting assessment of soft contact lens has to be done first than the RGP because we have already discussed that RGP we need to stain the lens and based on the ocular topography or keratometry findings RGP fitting is done. Even the soft fitting or RGP fitting mainly we consider is the topography or based on the corneal curvature we get the basic K values and that will be the base curve of choosing a contact lens. Movements of soft contact lens and RGP lenses are independent to each other. We cannot expect the lens to move together, the movements are comparatively they are independent to each other. After attaining optimal fits for both soft contact lens and RGP lens, 
over refraction and subject to acceptance is performed and added to the RGP power. Once the we feel that soft contact lens RGP fits are over overall good, then we do something called over refraction using retinoscopy. Subject to acceptance has to be done and the remnant power, whatever additional power patient is accepting, has to be added to the RGP power in order to order the final lens. Then both lenses should be of high DK material to minimize the risk of hypoxia. This is a very very important factor to consider because corneal health is very important. Hence, choosing a lens material with a high DK is very important in these cases. These are my references. Thank you.